Okay, we're going to get started with October Club Q. And I love the paper line in this one. This is um, gorgeous fall colors. And we're going to get started with, it's called Colorful Fall, DP 1589. And it looks like we suggest peppermint, fall leaves and summer days for chalking inks. And I have a few here that I'm gonna use that are a little different than that. So you choose from your stash what you would like. Um, I do have peppermint, which I'm going to use some red. Um, I have mango Mai Tai, which is a different kind of orange. Um, I also have weeping willow here. So that's a kind of an avocado green color. And I have dandelion, and tree trunk. So whatever matches from your stash, you go for it. I'm gonna use those colors. And we are going to get started. Uh, this one's Kits. I love the layered leaves, um, but these are very simple kits to put together. I hope you have perfect pictures to fit in there from fall days. Um, we are going to start, I'll get this out of the way, and we are going to start with, I'm going to bring out my background papers, and you can turn these whichever way you would like. And then I am going to Um, so I have mine going the same way. You can twist these around if you want to. And then I'm going to get the cutting out of the way. There's two diagrams here. So we need, for the cutting diagrams, we're going to use this brown um, wood grain paper, and it's the dark brown. Um, and then we also have a yellow and orange kind of floral map paper. We're going to use a diagram for that. I just want to make sure that it's not these two papers that you're cutting up. These ones are cut down to, I think, 11 and a half inches, so they're not quite 12 inches, but they're, it's, we're not cutting the one that is has a little bit of green on it and some stamps and stuff here. That is going to, those are already cut down for you, so you leave that. We are doing the dark brown here. And I'm gonna go ahead and get that started. So I lay my diagram right next to me. We are going to cut the four by sixes first. So go ahead and put that in. And really it doesn't matter too much which direction you have your paper because most of these will be covered with photos. We're just making some photo mats here. So we put it in at four inches and trim. We're going to turn it. Put it in at six and trim it down. So you have two four by sixes. And at any point, if you need to hit pause and kind of get caught up, you feel free to. Um, I also already punched out my die cuts and I put them in um, piles by color. So you'll want to do that as well. Okay, so now we are going to make the five by seven. So I'm going to put this piece in at seven long ways. And we're gonna put it in right at seven here. And trim. This is just an extra piece. You can save for another layout if you want. We're gonna turn that and cut it at five. So turn it and trim it at five. Five inches, and then you have a five by seven. With this last piece, we need a three by five and a three by four. So you actually have a square piece right here. It doesn't, I think it's square, so yeah. So you don't, it doesn't matter which way you turn it in there. So we are going to cut across at five. piece. We're going to turn it and do three. So you have a three by five. There's your three by five. And 
then we are going to, we need a three by four. So I'm going to, this one is a four, so I'm just gonna turn it this way and do three inches. So you have a three by four, a three by five, two four by sixes, and a five by seven out of the dark wood green paper. And then we will do the other diagram here. And if you want to, you can do the diagram exactly to what you see on here, or you can, um, depending on where you want the paper cut out, you can do it um, Let's see. Actually, you know what? I will. I'll just do it exactly like it's on here. So what you want to do, we're trying to get the five and a half by seven and a half out of this bright yellow part of the paper. So what we're going to do is put it into your trimmer at five and a half. So if you have the yellow piece touching the five and a half, and then we just need to bring this down to seven and a half. And see, this is where I'm running into trouble because my trimmer is all worn off so it doesn't show here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this a different way here. I'm going to turn this around and I'm gonna cut straight across the two four by sixes. So let's not pay attention to this. If you've already cut it like this, totally fine. Um, my trimmer doesn't have the numbers over here, so I can't see where to cut down on that. So I'm just gonna do the two four by sixes right next to each other. So just go ahead and watch this and pay no attention to your diagram. We're gonna cut this at six and a half. So the way that I have it is the bright yellow part is down here in the bottom right. And there's a darker piece up here where it's touching the six and a half. And I am going to cut that all the way across. That's six and a half. Pull this to the side. Then I'm gonna turn and cut it at four and a half. And we need two of these. Turning it and cutting your six and a half piece at four and a half. And then I'm going to move it down and cut it at four and a half again. So really this is how it kind of should have been on the directions, but um, I think we had it set up a little different so that you could get different colors um, and the floral parts out of there. But you don't really need to because you still have the floral parts here. So we have two four and a half by six and a half. So just ignore that diagram. If you've already done it like that, totally fine. Otherwise you can follow, keep following me and we'll have the same pieces that you need. So four and a half by six and a half. Now this piece is already five and a half. So we are going to turn it and cut it at seven and a half. So you still have that bright yellow piece and it's five and a half by seven and a half. With the piece that's left over, we need a three and a half by five and a half. So it's already five and a half this way. We are going to push it in and do a three and a half cut. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's see. Don't, don't cut it that way. I need to turn it. So we already have it at five and a half. We need to turn it and do a three and a half. So we'll let you get that situated there. So it's already five and a half this way. We're going to cut it at three and a half this way. And you have a little extra piece there. So three and a half by five and a half. Five and a half by seven and a half. 
and two four and a half by six and a half. So if you need to pause or rewind and go back over that, you can. But that's really all the cutting that we have. You have a little journaling piece that you need to trim out. You can use scissors or trim it out in your trimmer. And I have all of my die cuts punched out and I'm going to start chalking those up. So if you don't have those punched out yet, or if you wanna just wait and grab them as you go, that's fine too. I'm gonna get my trimmer out of the way. I'm going to start chalking up some of these. And I love, on this yellow paper, I love adding just a little bit of red to it. It really brightens it up and it kind of looks orange once you get it on there. But you use the colors that work for you. A bright yellow would be really nice on this too. Go ahead and, if you want to push pause and Chalk up all your leaves. Okay, now the first thing we need to do is get the background paper set up. There's two, I think it's 11 and a half by 11 and a half green papers that go on the background paper. Put a little bit on each one here. And that gets centered right in the middle. Do that with both. Okay. And then you have your background papers ready. The next layering piece we will be doing is the photo mats. I'm just gonna kind of lay these out so that we can match them up. The five and a half by seven and a half, the three and a half by five and a half, and then the four and a half by six and a half. And actually, I'm gonna put this one up here that has a little more yellow. And we match up the dark wood grain on top of that. And these all get centered right on there as well. And you have, out of your um, laser cuts, you had one um, green dot. There is a brown piece that goes right on top of that. So you can go ahead and glue those down. I'm just barely tacking mine down. You don't need to cover it all with glue, but you might want to use just a little more than I'm using here. So these get centered. Feel free to chalk any of these up as well. We just went to the pumpkin patch last week with my three boys and we got some great photos that would look perfect on these pages. Uh, we uh, just have to actually get the pictures into or onto the pages. Okay. So then from there, we just kind of start layering things up. If you don't have your pictures in there, just make sure that you're not putting glue where you want to slide a picture in later. Maybe just put a little in the middle of there and tack it down. Just kind of laying these out so that we know where they go. You have a pack of yellow brads. Those get in the tops here, bottoms here, and the top here. Just to add a little bit of color. 
And I have my little paper piercer, which makes it easy. You don't have to go all the way through the page. You can just, oops, I didn't tack that down really. Uh, you can just go through the photo map. So you don't have to go all through the all the way through the page there. little brads are just a good way to add a little extra color to it. Top two here. And I put it pretty close to the edge so that you still have plenty of room to put your picture and not have to go around. Or you can add your picture to it and put the brads right through your picture as well. Everywhere in the country has a fall where leaves change colors and stuff like that. But I hope at some point you'll be able to visit a place like that because the fall colors are gorgeous. Right now in Washington State, they're just starting to turn bright orange and yellow. And I love the colors of fall. Okay, once you have those in, you kind of have things set up like you would like. You can go ahead and tack this down if you want to, or you can get things in place. And I'll just show you how I kind of um, started layering. I actually started so from the underneath here. I'm gonna start with the these three largest ones in the middle, and then I'll just work my way out. So we have a red. yellow and with the red there are two different sizes this size here uh, the smaller size it actually is saved so, saved so that it fits right down here and if you need to trim off some of the stem you can do that but I saved the smaller one for that spot there because you don't have quite as much room And again, chalk these up like you would like them. I'm gonna use a little red. If you like the more vintage look, you can use a brown as well. I have manzanita over here, which is, actually I'll show you what it looks like. On one of the yellow ones. So it's a brown, but it has quite a bit of red in it. Manzanitas are really pretty fall color as well. So once you have these glued down, you just kind of want to tack these. However, it's not going to, um, you don't want it to cover up your photos. So if you already have your photos in there, just make sure that you are not covering up or put them a little closer. To, if you don't have photos in there yet, you can put these a little closer together so it's not covering up as much there. And I'm just going, kind of going by the picture. But you do what works for you. Once I kind of get things in place, a lot of times what I'll do is just pick up the, I don't have my Barely Art glue, but I have, the Barely Art glue has a really precision tip. I just like to pick this up and maybe put a few dots underneath there and lay it back down. And that's really all the adhesive that you need. So this is kind of just piecing things together here. I love 
lost one of my leaves. So what I'm going to do is just spread this out a little bit. I'm not sure what I did with that other one. Spread it out a little bit. And it'll still have the same look. Got a couple of leaves under here. And there's no right or wrong way to this. So if you have something specific you want to do, you go right ahead. If you need to trim these down a little bit to give yourself a little more space or room to tuck things in. So once I have these in place, then I kind of pick up the corners and I just glue them down. as I go. So I would just pick up the edge of that, put a little, few little glue dots behind that or drops of glue. And you definitely don't have to go by the picture. I am right now just to kind of make it match, but you put these wherever it works for you and your photos. This guy goes here. And if this covers up too much of this photo, just trim these off and it'll give you space there. So really, that's all there is to this gorgeous kit. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you have the perfect fall photos to put in there. Thanks so much for being a Club Q member and we will see you next time.